Hey guys, it's Ryan with My Listing Club. Today I wanted to share with you an exciting new resource for the My Listing community. We are calling them Starter Site Kits. And we're going to run through today what, what exactly they are, um, how to implement them, and what you can expect. And so you can make the best informed decision that you can with you know which, which assets, which resources from the club, and all that stuff that are important to you, if any at all. Um, so real quickly, I'm just going to show you how to find this information before we get started. Uh, up under our menu, under my listing resources, next to the starter site, you'll see a new starter site kits menu item. So if we click on that, this will go into everything that a starter site kit is and what it isn't. Um, as it says here, it is Essentially, it's everything that has to do with Elementor that is used to build a particular starter site, whether it's the templates, the content, pages, settings, etc., etc. It's all bundled up into one nice package for you. So let's go ahead and scroll down through this product page here. Um, part of the re one of the reasons that you might be interested in this is if you want to take even more of a DIY approach to replicating a starter site. Um, we were recently approached by someone who had been attempting to do this and ran into some issues and needed a resource from us that we didn't provide. And uh, we now are happy to say that we provide it. Um, so that person pushed us, motivated us to do something that was always on our to-do list. And uh, that is starter site kits. Okay, so I won't go through everything here. You can go through the product page yourself, but it just quickly says that it includes all the elements for content, template, templates, and settings. Like I said, uh, this page will be or this tab will be updated after this video is done. We'll have this walkthrough video embedded on there. This just walk walks you through how how it works, and um, we're gonna we're gonna show you that in this video. And then um, some really good FAQs were put in here to help you understand what it is, what their site kits are, and what they're not. Um, that sort of thing. And then to celebrate the launch of these kits, um, effective immediately through Saturday, July 3rd, they're going to be 30% off. Um, they're already a pretty low price for what you get, but you know, 30% off is really awesome. Okay. Um, and if you click on, um, one of these starter site kit images, it'll take you to the product page of the kit and, uh, you can, you can purchase it there. Okay, so that's kind of that. Um, lastly, let's go back under our resources here. You can also do a search right here. Um, I'm just gonna, for whatever you wanna find resource-wise. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the resource page again and go to the guides. A new guide has also just been dropped, how to build a My Listing Starter Site replica. And this walks you through, um, again, the story of how this came to be with potential customer needing the look of a starter site, but, but not necessarily needing all the premium assets. And they're so far along in their site already that they can't start over and all that kind of good stuff. So this kind of goes into the backstory of that a little bit. Um, and then it just walks you through that in order to do the replication, you, you need an ultimate membership hands down. You have to have that. Um, and then this explains what's not included in that and kind of hints here to save time, you know, get a starter starter kit. Save time with this item, get a starter kit, et cetera, et cetera. And then that moves down into the starter site kits and, you know, again, kind of highlights what they are, just kind of the same information again. And then we get into the implementation here, uh, which is also covered on the product page under the um, how it works. So it kind of, this is kind of boiled down into just a few steps um, or bulleted list over here. Okay. And then lastly, the guy just, you know, it talks about, let's do some math. Like a starter site is $399. If you go through the process of getting an ultimate membership and you get the starter site kit and then with some, you know, some work on your end, just as far as time goes and whatnot, um, just, it just, boy, it just lists out both paths, paths, basically. And you got to make the best decision for you. 
and what works. Um, our job is to give you uh, multiple options to get to your goals, to achieve your goals, and uh, give you the best information to make the best informed decisions. So that's all we can do, um, and I hope this is helpful and um, helps helps a lot of you out there. Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll leave these two open in case we got to reference them. So let's go ahead and see how this would work. How just how easy this is. Okay, so how it works. Step one: prepare your site before you start with anything on your website. Adding anything new, regardless of what it is, whether it's a starter site kit or what, always back it up first. Um, so that's step one. Got to back up your site. We, we the club, are not responsible if you do not back up your site. You install a kit and things go wonky. Like that is that's on you. You've got to back up your site. That's numero uno. Um, step number two. Um, it's basically anything that you see on any of the forest current four starter sites. Um, it's going to be brought in as far as the pages and the content and all of that stuff. So this just says if you if you want to prevent duplicate pages, we recommend that you remove anything that's been edited or you know and created with essentially edited with Elementor, anything of that sort. So any page that you've touched with Elementor, you may want to remove it. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. Not, it's just you're going to have duplicate pages that all have the same potentially have the same title. So, for example, if you have a cart a cart page. Um, if you import the kit, you're going to get another cart page and the, the page name will be the same, but the underlying slug will be different and you might get confused. Again, not the end of the world. You can choose which one you want to use. Just got to make sure that you clean up the slug underneath. Okay. Um, step three, Elementor Pro is thousand percent required. None of this is possible without that. You can't even go through the import process. So you have to have Elementor Pro. Um, the second one is Crocoblox Jet Tabs. That is used on starter sites one, two, and three only. Um, that will probably change in the future. Um, I'm probably going to remove that plugin completely and just do it all. Um, well, I take that back. It might be removed from, from maybe one of the sites, um, but it'll probably be on on a couple of them. So it's it's. Basically, just assume that you're going to need Crocoblox Jet Tabs. It's only fifteen dollars a year, um, so it's not that much. It's it's pretty powerful stuff. Um, number four is you got to get Elementor ready to import the kits, and that's just a simple flip of a switch within the Elementor settings. If you don't have that ability, that means you need to upgrade your Elementor Pro version. Okay. Um, step two. Download and import your kit. I'm going to show you how fast it is to purchase, download, and import the kits. Uh, okay, and then the final step is just you've got, you just like with starter sites, the full-blown ones. When you get your kit, you're gonna. it's not going to be 100% what you want. Like, you're going to want to add stuff. You're going to want to add, you're going to want to change some wording, blah, 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 blah. It's just, it's just the way it is. Um, you're not going to want it exactly like the starter site. You're going to have to make a few tweaks, but this in the end saves you still a ton of time. Okay, so we'll go through everything here. And again, this video will be embedded here. All right, so let's get to it. Let's prepare our site. Let's just assume we've backed up our site. We'll move on to step two. Uh, we're looking at the back end of our WordPress dashboard. This is a brand new, fresh install uh, of WordPress, we see we've got the, the only the plugins installed that my listing wants out of the box. And then if we look at our themes, you'll see we have the my listing parent and child theme. The child theme is active, so super clean, uh, bare bones. In this situation, it fits really well, um, whether it be a full blown starter site or a starter site kit, because you you know it's it's a clean slate and uh, if we look at the pages, we see the default pages in there. If we were to import a site kit right now, this cart page, checkout page, my account, privacy, poly, po privacy policy, yeah, I think that also would be, and potentially shop, these would all be duplicated because those are named exactly that way in the starter site. Okay, so 
if you've not done any design, you don't need to keep these pages for any reason. You know, all you got to do is just go in, just delete all of these. And this is a key component of this as well. You, you want to empty the trash. If you don't, then those underlying slugs, the URLs for these pages are, are not going to be usable when the starter site kit comes in. Um, so, you know, cart will have cart dash two, checkout will be checkout dash two, and so on and so forth. So just empty the trash. It's the best way. Okay, so now we have no pages. We have my listing theme, and we've got the bare bones plugin. Okay, so back to our, our steps here. Ensure that any plugins used to build the pages are in, installed and activated before you implement the kit. So Elementor Pro is first on our list. So let's go ahead and drop that in. Let me uh, jump over here to my downloads folder. One second. Just gonna locate Elementor Pro for us and drop it in there. I'm also gonna go ahead and drop in Jet Tabs. All right, there's Jet Tabs. Okay, so we can go ahead and move this back over, minimize. All right, so I'm gonna bring in Elementor Pro. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing licensed and connected here. All right, so that's done. Next thing I wanna do is I want to apply any updates that may be available for Elements or Elements Pro. Uh, so it doesn't look like there are any, but if there are, they will pop in here shortly. I'm going to go ahead and add Crockleblock Jet Tabs now. And there that is. Again, these plugins are, are included in the starter sites. Um, they are also included in, uh, Elementor Pro is included in all kinds of different places on the club, whether it's your gut keys to hosting, starter site, uh, ultimate membership, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of places to get your hands on Elementor Pro. All right, so we have an update for Jet Tabs. We're gonna run that. I'm gonna go ahead and update Elementor Pro. Actually, let's, let's quickly jump over here to Elementor and see if I can show you how that the, the import export is not available. So under experiments, yeah, okay, so it is there for this this option. Cool. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and update Elementor. All right, refresh this page. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to activate import export templates. I'm going to go ahead and turn off these two for now. All right, so that's lit up green, active. We're good to go there. Um, just go ahead and close this. And we've got our jet tabs in. All right, so let's go back here. So we've done Elementor Pro, we've done Crocoblock jet tabs. Those are installed, those are activated. And we've done step four by turning on that experiment to import export template kits. All right, so now we move on to step two. Uh, just down, download and import your kit. So like I said, if here on the um, on the products page, oh, you can go into resources here, starter site kits. It's actually already there. Anyway, scroll down here. Um, we'll just open this in a new tab. So, you know, just purchase it as you normally would. You're going to have the download button immediately avail available to you after you check out. It's going to pop right up for you just download that the download takes i don't know three seconds four seconds okay so let's just assume we've already got that downloaded which we do um, all we do is we jump over into let's go ahead and close this down let's go ahead and jump over here into elementor tools import export kit 
import a template kit. We're gonna browse to our downloaded template kit that we, starter site kit that we bought from the club. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll start with uh, starter site three, My City Charlotte. All right, so when it's done, it's going to say your file is ready. And, you know, just in maybe a little over a minute, you know, we've got it purchased, download. Well, not purchased, but the whole process. I mean, five minutes tops, purchase to download to import. That's it. All right, let's click back to dashboard. Okay, and if we go ahead and we look over at our pages, boom, there we go. Everything is in there that, that's part of the starter site. All right, now if we jump over here to, let's jump to the front end of the site. So we see we've got to make a change here as far as the reading goes, because it's, it's, it's wanting to pull up our posts um, by default. So we're gonna go into reading and we're gonna change this to our homepage. Okay, go back and refresh. I'll move these pages out of here. All right, so let's refresh this. All right, there we go. Just like that, um, we've got most of the starter site there. Um, now these toggles, you know, if you compare this to starter site three, um, though this this is missing something here, so we need to fix that. Jumping over to our templates. We see that all our templates are automatically brought over, so that's really cool. Um, if we edit our home page, and let's go here to this switcher. This is done with the jet tabs. So we just need to tell it which template to use. So we've got top listings and latest listings. So for the first one, top listings, let's go ahead and choose that one. So we'll just do a search for top, plug that in. We'll switch over to the other tab, which is latest listings. And we'll do the same thing, we'll do latest. Okay, plop that in. Scroll on down further and we will do the same thing to this switcher. The first one is labeled joins. So we wanna do, do a search for join. Cool. those come up we're going to switch over to the explore one do a search for explore plop that in cool so we got our switcher working that all looks good um, this is because of the listing uh, preview cards and whatnot uh, and the you know the listings in general because we don't have any so let's go ahead and update let's refresh our home page boom so we see just like that our switcher is working that's great. And the reason why this one isn't working is because we don't have any listings. So not a huge deal. You in all likelihood are going to, you know, have your own listings that you import or create yourself or that your users are going to create. So it's not a huge deal. If this was the starter site, you would get demo listings. Um, sometimes people use those demo listings and they, they flip them into their own, but a lot of times they just get rid of those listings, demo listings or just use them as a, as a reference. Um, so nothing lost here, You're not losing anything. You just, you just gotta get your listings in there. And once they're in there, this will populate. Uh, and that's done because if you look at the template, these individual switcher templates, we'll just quickly look at those. And the ones that we see that are missing are, are the, uh, so late, top and latest. So again, if we do a search, there's latest and top. So let's just edit one of these, let's do latest. So edit with that with Elementor. And we edit the widget. And we see here we have the listing feed widget and it's wanting to pull in information 
there's this is there's nothing there because the site is not configured as far as the my listing settings go. So again, this brings up a, a really important point. If you were to do a full blown starter site, this would have demo, demo dummy data in there, but it's like a fully functioning hypothetical website. It's what a starter site is. Now, the starter site kits are only Elementor based content, pages, templates, and all that stuff it has nothing to do with my listing. So that's a pro and the con you got away with between the starter site kits and the full blown starter site. If you are far enough along and you're in your building of your my listing website, this is probably not even a problem. Uh, you maybe even you prefer it. Okay, so it's not a bad thing. It's just a different approach to doing this. Um, all right, so that's pretty much it on that front. Let me make sure I go back here and I didn't miss anything. So we've prepared our site, we've downloaded and imported our kit. Yeah, so the final piece is just making it your own. So we're, we're here on the homepage. You know, maybe your branding is different. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, your, your colors are different. You know, likely they are. Uh, let's go into our site settings here and go into our global colors. Um, for some reason, those did not pull in, so I'm going to have to figure out why that is. Um, but in my opinion, this is the least important part of the whole thing because you're going to probably put your own stuff in anyway. Um, so that's not a big deal. Um, looking at the light box, that is configured correctly, so that's that's good. for You want this toggled off for my listing sites, so that's good. Um Let's see here, we got uh, typography was brought over. Uh, not much going on there, uh, and that is intentional on the starter sites. Um, let's see here, global fonts. Global fonts were brought in, okay. Yeah, so that's cool. So it looks like the only thing that didn't come over was maybe the global colors. That's interesting. Okay, anyway, not a huge deal. Um, the, the this Elementor import export kit thing is experimental. Uh, that's why it's listed under the experiments tab. So we can figure out why this might be, you know, and if this is that super important to you. Um, so as we see here, it's under experiments. It might be. Yeah, I'll have to ask Elementor on that. So I might be able to get you that ad hoc if you really want it. But again, chances are you're not going to want you're going to want to do your own thing, you know. I've even considered not even including the site settings, you know, but there are some good ones in there. Like, you know, some people don't know to turn off the light box when you have a my listing site to let my listing itself do the light box action and whatnot. So if, if you look at the underlying settings of, of a full blown starter site, you know, this stuff is left pretty vanilla on purpose, you know, so people can do their own thing. So. Let's just bounce over here and let's just close this. And let's let's just look at how we might approach this. So let's let's say red is you know our our branding. So let's drop that down. We'll do a background of just red. Uh, so let's just find let's do like a fun fun red there. You know, and then this is this is now our brand. So let's click on the create new global color and let's just call this our primary accent color or primary color, whatever you want to call it. We'll just click create there. Um, you know, let's change this to a different city maybe, you know. My city, um, what's New York? My city, New York, uh, best of our city, that still works. The best of everything, um, I'm not sure what a, a nickname for New York is, but the best of everything, I'm just gonna say, our city has to offer, you know, whatever. You know, you get the idea here. So this all looks cool. You can use all of this. You know, scrolling on down here, we know our color's red, so we can plop in here and change this. Maybe we don't want that gradient, maybe we do. Let's, let's just see how that works. So we're gonna select for our top color, our primary accent. We're gonna do the same for the bottom color Okay, but to do our gradient, we're going to jump back in here and actually we're going to keep that one as our primary. We're going to make this one a little darker. 
make sure I got the right one here. No, I don't. Okay. Sorry, I keep waffling back and forth. We're going to make this one a little darker. Okay, so there we've just created our gradient. We're going to click this uh, plus sign to create a new global color. And we're going to call this primary accent dark. You can call it whatever you want, but you get the idea. All right, scrolling on down, you know, maybe we want to change uh, these toggles around. It's going to go ahead and update this. And let's see, let's jump into our style for the switcher here. And here we see that the handler color is this. We're going to change it to our primary accent color. And on the other side, we're going to change this to our darker color. Okay, so we flip over, you see it gets a little darker. Okay, uh, we're going to do the same for this switcher. And you can actually jump over here if you want. You can do a, a copy on the style and then paste that style in. It save you some time there. We see that doesn't look quite right. But you know, you can adjust all of this stuff. I just add some padding, make this a little wider. All right, that looks a little better. All right, all right. So let's jump over to our switchers template, and let's change. I like to do this sometimes. Let's find all of our switcher templates. So we don't need the switcher itself. So this main switcher, we need the underlying templates. There's going to be four. One, two, three, four. Okay. So we want the four underlying ones. So we don't want the platform. You can see the ones that are in brackets, the ones that are going to be underneath. So we're going to just open up all of these. We make sure we get them all in one shot. Okay, so we have this one open. We're going to go ahead and plop it open. We see that this one, add your listing. We see that that one appears under join. So we want it to have that same color, which is our primary red. We want to match these up. Or you can do whatever, but I'm just going to show you how I would approach it. So let's jump in here. Let's change our button color to be our primary. Let's change our ribbon to be our primary. Okay. And we can just go ahead and copy that. And again, paste the style, paste the style. Save. We're going to jump over to our next one. So it's start your search. We see that's under explore. So we want to match those up. So again, we're going to change our button. And we're going to change our ribbon. We're going to copy and paste our styles. And save. All right, jumping over to this one. Uh, we see here in the bottom, we have an explore all. And if we look at the other, we see the same thing. So we've got to change this blue color now to match. So for this one, we'll just highlight our, highlight our it's a button. It looks like it's just text, but it's actually a button. And we're going to change this to our primary. And then on hover, we're going to change it to darker. Okay, so that gives us a little hover action. We can now copy that style as well and paste that in over here. Okay, so we'll save that. Under our switcher here, looks like nothing's there, but you want to click that, and this is the listing feed widget. Um, it's going to get its style, actually going to get its style from elsewhere. So I think we're good there. Let's go ahead and refresh our homepage. Boom, that looks pretty cool. Scrolling on down, we see there's our switcher with our button that changed. So that's cool. Again, listings will populate here in this one as soon as they're added to the site. This looks cool. Everything color match. Pretty awesome stuff. All right, so we're not going to go through every page. I just wanted to show you how easy it is, whether it's a starter site or it's a starter site kit, how easy it is to make this your own. Um, so one thing you'll quickly notice here is that the it's the header here is this the default my listing header. So let's work on replacing that. Let's jump over under our templates and let's go to our header. Do a search for header under templates. And we're going to want to do, 
let's look at this. We're going to want to do a transparent header here. Okay, so let's, let's use that transparent template. Edit that. Let's go under our display conditions. And the reason why the display conditions aren't taking hold here is because we removed all of those pages before import. So it really had nothing to attach itself to. Um, so that, that is, that's something else to consider. So now we can go in, it may not be a big deal. Maybe you want to have more control, but let's say you did have a home page uh, in there before. Yeah, it actually wouldn't work that way. So that, that's something that's, that that's something to consider, but again, not a huge deal because you you know you may want to control this uh, more more yourself. So we're just going to click on Add Condition, and we're just going to choose Entire Site for now. So now we've applied that header template to the whole entire site. So if we do a refresh here, bam, we've got our we've got our template. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take out the admin bar on this. Fresh, boom! So that looks pretty cool. All right, that was that was quick. So, um, so we see here we've got a logo missing, and we, we need to put that in. That's just because the site doesn't have a logo. So as soon as you plop in your logo and, and add it to um, this template, it's gonna appear. Okay, so no biggie there. So let's see what else we've got here to make this page look final. So if we click on menu. See, nothing comes up. So this needs to call something. Um, if Again, you want to look at the starter site that you are trying to mimic and, and see what the action is. If you were to look at starter site 3, so let's just go ahead and look at that. You want to, you want to if you're trying to replicate it, you want to just see what, what action fires. So you click on menu, what happens? Well, something slides out. That tells you right away it's a pop-up. That's not your normal my listing behavior. Okay, so we need to find that pop-up. Okay, so let's go over here to our pop-ups. What in here looks like it might be what we need? Um, it's not a contact us form. It's, so that leaves you with one. That's this off Kansas, Canvas menu pop-up. We're gonna edit that with Elementor. Okay, and then with pop-ups, you drop down into this gear in the lower left and hit settings, and then you go to style, and that's when where this background is, is coming in. So same as we did for the home page, we're gonna choose our primary accent color for the top, and then as we go down, we want it to be darker. Cool, so that's pretty easy stuff. Um, this all looks good, this all looks good. This is gonna be another pop-up, okay? So if you click that, you'll see that it calls a pop-up. Um, so let's go ahead and just uh, save this. You know, the display conditions we don't need to do anything with because the button calls it. Um, there's nothing you need to do there. So let's go ahead and refresh and see what we have. Uh, let's see what I did here. I think I forgot to call the. All right, so I need to go edit the button in the header, and tell it to pull that off Kansas Canvas menu pop up template. All right, so now let's refresh. Okay. All right, there we go. So that's cool. That's sliding out. Now, if we were to click contact here, what will ha what happens? Nothing. Okay, so we need to set that display condition as well. Let's go back into our pop-ups. Again, so go back, going back to starter site three, we, we see when we click that contact pop that another pop-up on the left shows up. So we wanna look for a contact form on the left. So here it is, contact us, it's on the left. Let's edit that. Again, down to the settings gear, style, and just repeat our process. Save our changes. Let's go back and refresh our home page. Did I forget something again? 
go ahead and close some of these down that we don't need any longer. Uh, da, da, da. All right, so we edit our, so we edit the contact button. We're calling a pop up. I don't know what I keep doing wrong here. Here we go. Contact us left. Okay, so now we've specified. I just I know what it is. I just forgot. So. Okay, so now we've applied that button to call our contact form on the left. Let's refresh our page. Menu slides out, contact button, calls our contact button form on the left. Beautiful. So now you see here, uh, we're missing the menu that is appearing here. And that's because you don't have one. Again, we're only importing Elementor-based data. You have content. You have to create the other stuff, the WordPress stuff, the my listing stuff, and all that is covered uh, here in the in the, in the guide. Let me see if I can find the guide. Everything is covered here in the guide. It, it, it tells you like what's not included, what you have to do on the side. Okay. So this is different than buying a full blown starter site. You get, there's steps that you need to take yourself. Okay. Let me move that back out of the way. So we need to recreate this menu. All right, so we're gonna jump over here into appearance, menus in the WordPress dashboard. Let's just create one called primary. We're gonna set it as our primary and, and click create menu. Another really good reference here while I'm thinking about it is on the My Listing Club website, if you go under search or you go under uh, resources and guides, do a search for build and look for a guide called how to build an online business using the my listing theme this walks through everything how to create the menus you know everything so if i click on navigation here boom it tells you how to do the woocommerce menu the general menu everything okay so that would also be a great resource for you all right, we're not going to recreate the whole thing because you get the idea, but uh, let's just drop in our homepage. Drop in a few here. Uh, let's see. Here's our homepage. So we'll highlight or check that and click add to menu. What else we got here? Explore and how it works. We'll stop with those two. Uh, let's see. Explore and how it works. So let's add those two and then save. Refresh our homepage. Boom, so now we see those links in the menu. And that is because our off canvas menu here is calling, first it's calling our logo, which doesn't exist, so you'll just have to add your logo. And then it's calling the nav menu. And which menu is it calling? It's gonna call the primary menu by default, okay, which we just set up. So that's how that works. Um, so we're good there, we're good there. If you click Explore page, this is gonna work. However, you don't have your Explore page set up because this is a piece of my listing. What I mean by that, I will show you. So let's go ahead and close this down. Let's edit our Explore page. Yeah, the Explore page is brought in and it's got the title from the starter site kit the same template that was used, blah, 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 blah. But the listing types are showing NA because you, you have, they're, not, they're not there. So you just have to create those and assign them here. Or maybe you already have them on your, your site, in, in which case you would just go in here and select those and then they would populate, all right? But as far as the setting and everything, settings and everything goes with the starter site and the starter site kit, they are pulled in. All right, what else do we have? Um, let's go back and click menu. And let's go to the How It Works page. So there we go. It's fully functional because we had the Crocoblox Jet Tabs plug already in there. Um, so as you see here, it looks different than the starter site because the background isn't white. And if you look at under Theme Tools, theme options, my listing out of the box by default loves this F4, F4, F4 color. If you change this to white, in my opinion, it 
greatly modifies or modernizes your website in just that simple click. Okay, so if we jump back over here and we refresh, bam. Just that fast, you've got the look of Starter Site 3 is how it works page. All right. Um, so another, this is, brings up another one. So another good point, we can't see the menu here. Okay, two points actually. We see here that the page ID is one, it's showing the page ID versus like the pretty, the pretty permalinks. This, this is really nothing to do with, with um, the starter site kit. If you brought the full blown starter site in, this would all be set up. But this is another one of those things that you just need to set up yourself. So under settings, Sorry, settings, permalinks. You need to set set this to post name and then save your changes, which, which flushes those permalinks. And we'll go ahead and refresh this page. So now we see that the page ID gets flipped over to how it should be. You know, that's, that's what you want. Okay, so then that other piece was the header. Because we're assigning the transparent header to the whole site, it, it just it won't work for the whole site. So as we see on this one, we've applied a gradient solid version of the header. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this and let's jump back into our templates. Let's call up our headers. Actually, it wouldn't be called headers, just called header. So we've assigned, we've done the transparent one site-wide. Let's go ahead and pull this up. Actually, we'll leave that for now. Let's let's edit the collar one. And we want to highlight the section. That's not loading. The famous Elementor doesn't load right away issue. All right, so let's, again, edit the section. Go to the style. We're going to do our same gradient here. All right, so that's done. Logo you can put in. We need to edit our menu again, our menu button, and we're going to call that off canvas pop-up and save and save. Okay. At this point, it's, there, it's not doing anything. It's not assigned anywhere. There's anywhere. There's no display conditions. So what we want to do is start assigning this to certain pages. So we click on this down here in Elementor and we click display conditions, add conditions. And we want to just choose our, how it works page to start with. So just drill down here until you find individual pages. Do a search for how, and there's our how it works page. Save or close. Now, if we refresh our site, we should see that come in. Boom, there it is. Okay. Now, if we also look at the home page, We see that that retains its transparent header while this one retains more of a solid header. Let's go now and edit the How It Works page. All right, let me change that up and let's change our Jet Tab styling here. I think it's the controls. Nope, control item. All right, so drill down into here. Okay, on hover, we've got that color. So let's go ahead and change that. And then our active control, we're going to change that also to our accent. So boom, just like that, got that set. Um, everything under this, for the most part, is the screenshots that you would need to create on your own. Okay, but if we just do like that quick comparison again, let's look at let's look at each tab. So how is it different? Okay, we see here that there's a get started link that's highlighted with a little bit of uh, it's got that's the, our primary accent color and it's got an underline effect that would be brought in with this with the the CSS package that you would get from from the ultimate membership that would have that underline style. Not critically important, but uh, if we jump back here. Uh, we can't see that underline that's there. 
All right, so how do we get that to show up? So if we jump back into our page and we go to site settings, typography, and we want to change, we can change our links to match our primary accent color. And then on hover, we can change that to maybe be a little darker, update that. Now let's go ahead and refresh our page. Boom, there we go. So now that stands out. And like I said, if you were to have this, the CSS package for that relates to this starter site and specifically to this page, uh, you know, that underline would be there. And you know that because if we look at our page again on that first tab, if we edit this, let's go back to our editor here. If we edit that very first tab, somehow it got that underlying style to it. So if we look underneath here and under the text, we see that it gets span class underline gray. So somewhere in the CSS package that is available for starter site three, my city Charlotte, it's going to have this CSS included in there. So you don't have to keep that underlying. You can actually remove this code if you, if you don't want that in there, but that that's how that's getting applied. That's what one of the reasons why, one of the many reasons why you also need the ultimate membership is to get the same exact look. Okay. And that one being the, like the most minor of all, there's way more major reasons why you need the ultimate membership to go along, but, uh, won't go in, on, into all that on this video. Yeah. So now as you see, as you start to go through, you start to see those, you know, those links come through. Um, uh, maybe let's say you want to, uh, make those pop a little bit more. You know, maybe you want your li links to be, you know, really stand out. You could change it to bold. And we see right away what that does. Okay, so lots of ways to play with that. If you're familiar with Elementor at all, like this, you get all of this. It's slam dunk easy. Okay, um, I think that's about it for this video. Um, yeah, I can't think of any. Oh, I take that back. Let's, um, yes, let's do one more thing. I'm going to show you. So you've, you've done your backup and before the site kit was brought in and uh, that's good on you for doing that. Now you've, you've, you've tinkered around a little bit and whatnot and something happens and you need to roll back. So you can, you can roll back to that backup. I mean, that's, that's what it's for. Uh, really cool stuff. But let's say you want to take, you know, more drastic measures like Let's say like you've changed your mind and um, I want a different starter site kit. You know, what would that look like? What would that entail? So you, we just go back through the process again and um, you can delete all of these pages and, you know, just go through the process again and start over. Um, but while I've got all these pages in here, I wanted to show you what the duplicate page issue would look like. So let's say we did nothing. Let's say this is your site, you forgot to delete the pages. Let's go in here under Elementor again, under our experiments, sorry, tools, Elementor tools. Let's bring in a different site kit. Oh, and by the way, this brings up another point. Before you did that, just in case you wanted to re retain this, and you know, maybe you wanted to roll back in the future, you can create another backup and label it whatever. Another way you, you can do it is just export your own kit here, you know, and, and then save it on your hard drive and, and label it there as whatever you want. But let's say we're going to jump in here. We're going to, we're going to import starter site four. So base camp starter site kit, pull this in.
All right, that's done. Let's go back to our dashboard and we're going to go to pages. Okay, as we see here, we've now got, uh, let's go ahead and show, show a lot more pages. So we see we have two How It Works pages, um, two support pages. So a little bit of duplication there. Two Get Started pages. But the one thing I really want to show you here is if you look under, if you do a quick edit here on this Get Started, you see here the slug is dash two. If we look at the other one, there's, you know, it's that's the original. So. Again, not the end of the world. Um, maybe you want the duplicates so you can decide which one to keep or whatever, but before you go live, you want to make sure that whichever one you choose has the proper slug. You don't want that dash two in there uh, and that sort of thing, okay? So if we look at these, both of these get started pages, they're gonna be completely different. The original is gonna be the starter site three look and then the other one is going to be the starter site for look. Okay, two completely different pages, but that's what it would be. Um, so to wrap up this video, the last thing I want to mention is um, we want you guys to be happy. We want you guys to save the most money that you can. We want you to get launched as fast as you can. In the event that you buy a starter site kit, you know you pay the ninety nine dollars. Um, we can't do it on this. Well, actually, we can, and we'll just do the same. But whatever it is that you pay for the starter site kit, whether it's you get it on sale or you pay for it full price, and you decide that it's just it's not working, you you, you don't you want to launch faster. You don't want to go through this process. You just want the starter site. Maybe you want the premium assets that come with it. You've changed your mind. Um, just reach out to me, Ryan, and. Let me know what you've purchased. I won't know that you purchased this starter site kit. I, I only know if, I won't know who you are that you purchased it specifically, but just let me know that you've purchased it and you wanna flip it over to a starter site, a full-blown starter site set instead. Um, what I will do is I will credit you whatever it is that you've paid for that starter site kit and apply it towards your starter site. However, the one caveat is, is that there's got to be a one-time charge of $25 for my time to, to now go in and deliver your site. Um, so that's the difference. So you, you, you still, instead of being out the whole money for your starter site, you get almost all of it back. But the, the, the time has to be covered to go out now and deliver the starter site for you. So that's what that one-time charge is for. Uh, so yeah, you just reach out to me and, and say you want to do that, and uh, it'll be it'll be taken care of. Um, if you've if you've bought multiple starter starter kits, starter site kits, unfortunately, you know you can't apply both of those to a starter site. So just uh, we can apply a credit for one starter site kit that you buy. Okay. Uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope for, hopefully you're as excited about this as I am. And um, yeah, I'll get the announcement made. Um, thanks a lot, guys, and have a good one.